so this is our final uh, webinar meetup uh, for this year, apart from a follow-up, but that's a different thing. So uh, I would like to welcome Hugh Deller. We'll, Hugh, we've been waiting for you for a long time. <laughs> so welcome. Hello, hello, hello. So these crazy people here, some, some of them you can see, um, some of them you can't for now. Uh, so they have been teaching with uh, Outcomes Advanced. Some, some of the groups started in June so okay. for a while. They have maybe more experience <laughs> teaching with Outcomes than you do. Yeah, well, that's possible. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but we'd like to see how you work with a book. So that's why. Okay. Here. Um, I should begin by saying how I would usually work with the book involves being in a classroom where I can actually see people uh, and um, talk to them face to face and um, not just have weird little tiny pictures of them up the top of my screen and where I have a whiteboard and that kind of thing. So I, I guess, you know, you, you have to bear all that in mind as we do what we're going to do today. Okay. Um, I'm not massively adept at using Zoom um, and I also have someone upstairs in my house fixing a water tank so I may also get distracted by all of this okay so uh, I'll begin by getting all my excuses in at the, uh, the, to, to start with so um, I'm guessing from what Anita's told me that most of you have copies of Outcomes Advanced with you yeah, yeah. yeah. okay good 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 if you don't, go and get it quickly. <laughs> see people running off to the other room to grab it. Yeah, because so, you refuse to use the illegal PDF copies on the screen, so for some reason. Now, there it is, look. Well done, Natalie. <laughs> so, what we're going to be looking at, talking about, doing some language connected to, and uh, maybe some listening connected to, is generally just talking about the media and thinking a little bit about newspaper English, journalism and stories that you hear in the news. Um, this was one that Anita picked for me yesterday and basically said, do that spread. So, you know, I'm at her mercy. Uh, it's also quite a strange one for me to be doing this week because, um, as you probably know, we have a, a general election tomorrow. And uh, I've been glued to 54 different kinds of media kind of things going on for about the last month and um, been getting quite stressed generally about the media. That's why so, I chose it, actually. Uh, thank you for that. That's <laughs> you're, very thoughtful. you're welcome. Very, very thoughtful. So th this is kind of what we're going to be talking about. So what I'd like you to do first, in a couple of minutes, we're going to put you in breakout rooms. Okay. Have a look at page 114, 115. Okay, you should see some kind of picture like this. Yeah, have a quick look at the picture. Have a quick think about what you think's happened. Okay, what do you think it's a picture of? What do you think it shows? What kind of news story it was? Um, what do you think's happened before it was taken? What do you think maybe happens afterwards? Okay. What kind of headline might you give it? Is this the kind of thing you like to read yourself? Why, why not? Are there any other kinds of stories that you prefer to read? And do you think there's enough positive news in the newspapers or in whatever kind of news streams you consume yourself? So I'm gonna rely on Anita to stick you into breakout rooms, ideally groups of three if that's possible. So, sorry to drag you all away from the past. I feel slightly guilty. So um, from, from listening to a few different breakout rooms, um, most of you were correct in guessing that these were minors. Uh, any idea which country? <coughs> Bolivia, Colombia, or something like that. Chile. South America. Yes. Oh, Latin America. South America. You're close. Yeah. It was actually in Peru. Peru. And, um, most of you were kind of correct in guessing that somehow they were underground for a long time uh, and then they somehow got out. Any idea how long they were underground? A few days. A couple days. of days. A couple of days. I heard a few people saying this. Keep guessing. A week. Keep guessing. 
a month. No, they, no, they no, look. No. Uh, we didn't look so that it's yeah, a few weeks. hours, maybe. Sixty-nine days. 69 um, days. Oh really? Yeah, so there, there were oh my God. miners in Peru, and they were basically trapped underground for thir for sixty nine days, and all thirty three oh, wow. of them somehow managed to survive. Yeah, what did they eat? Uh, I think they managed to somehow get food down to them. Yeah. Oh, okay. they, they, they couldn't work out a way of getting them out, but they could work out a way of getting food and drink down to them. So, kind of crazy story. So, mm -hmm. a few bits of vocabulary. C can you see the shared screen there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, most of you were guessing. Oh, I think they must be miners who've been mm, underground. I heard Trapped. quite a few people saying Trapped. locked. Trapped. Trapped. Yeah. Trapped. 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 Yeah. Not locked. Locked is always like locked in a room or locked in the basement. Aliens are trying to contemplate us. Yeah, somebody has a bit more sound. Oh. Okay, just a second. They've been trapped underground, yeah. And I guess that they've just been mm -mm. So if you're trapped and then someone kind of frees you, you've just been rescued? Rescued. rescued. Okay. Yeah. Quite a few people I noticed um, basically are not big fans of news channels or newspapers. Quite a few of you were just saying, ah, oh, personally, I just avoid most news channels, most newspapers. Stay I'm away. Stay away. Stay away. Get rid of. Not get rid of. Again? Stay away. Stay away. No. no. Stay away. <laughs> stay away. Like if you come to work and you've got a terrible cold, people might say to you, go on, stay away from me. If you try and avoid something, you mm -mm of it. There's Maria writing in the chat, steer clear of. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, sorry, I missed it, Maria. <laughs> steer clear of. So, you know, I just avoid them. Because the news is depressing. The news really gets me. Frustrated? No. Nah. No? It's depressing. If Depressed. I the news, I just want to kill Depressed. myself. It depresses me, it really gets me down. <coughs> and some of you were saying sort of slightly guiltily, yeah, I know, you know, I should try to follow what's happening in the world. Uh, I should try to mm -mm with what's going keep on. Keep up to date. Keep up, keep with, up. Keep keep up, with. up with. Yeah, you okay. don't need to say to date, just... Okay. Keep up with. But it's too depressing. I just can't mm it. Face it. I can't face it. <clears throat> yeah, it's usually negative. Oh, I just can't face it. Like maybe if you know you should go to the gym and do some exercise or something, but it's cold outside and it's raining. You're going to the gym? Oh, I just can't face it today. Some of you were talking about how there are very, very, very few positive stories in the news. And you were saying there's like a complete lack of positive stories. There's a real mm of positive deficit. stories. Deficit. Now, deficit's much more economic. So, you know, you can run a trade deficit as a country. Deprivation. <laughs> real dearth. Oh. Ah, new one. Dearth of positive story. Yeah, like a real <laughs> shortage of, a real lack of. And uh, there were a couple of optimists in some of the rooms kind of saying, listen, it's not all depressing. Sometimes you get some positive stories. It's not all mm and mm. It's not all bad news. It's not all depressing. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not doom all and doom and gloom. <coughs> yeah, and again, it's usually negative. It's not all doom and gloom. Doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll share the file with you later, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So don't panic about writing everything down. So let me stop the share, go back to the thing. Yeah, okay, so can you still hear me, see me okay? Yeah. 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 So yeah. have a look at the next page, page 116. 
And first, I'd like you just to look at the picture at the top there, okay? You've got a whole selection of um, headlines from one particular local newspaper. Have a quick look through. Where do you think the newspapers are from? Yeah. And any language you're not sure of in the headlines? <coughs> So where do you think it's all from? Anything you're not sure Australia. 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 South, Africa. No? South Africa. Uh, Australia, right first Australia. time. Crocodile. Yeah, you know, yeah. A, a country where crocodile attacks are a sort of normal everyday <laughs> thing. And uh, anything in the, the headlines you're not sure of? My favourite headline is Crocs attack drunk locals. <laughs> that, that there's got to be a really good YouTube clip of this somewhere. You know, there you are sitting there having a few beers with your friends outside when suddenly <laughs> it's this God's way of telling you to stop drinking and go home. Uh, anything you're not sure of? You're okay then? Uh -huh. I was talking about the headlines, the main headlines, or the ones <laughs> underneath. No, the, the headlines at the top. The croc headlines. Everything jaws okay? of a croc. Again? Jaws of a croc. Yeah, the jaws, like, you know. Ah, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the film jaws. But yeah, you rescue the cop from the croc jaws. I guess the crocodile was about to kind of eat this policeman and they somehow pulled him free. Yeah. So we're going to be looking a little bit at kind of newspaper headlines and the language of headlines. Have a quick look at the yellow box. I'll give you a minute just to read through it. I'm guessing it tells you things you already know, but have a quick look anyway. Yeah, one of the strange things with headlines, I think, is it's not only always just shorter words. Obviously, headlines do often use shorter words because of the space and the, the kind of pressure on space. But often, if there's a synonym, they'll use the synonym which is more dramatic as well. Yeah, not necessarily just because it's shorter, but also because it has more of a kind of impact on the reader. And as I'm sure you know, you know, the headlines will leave out nice for Russian speakers, leave out the articles, um, you know, leave out any extra additional bits of grammar. So if you have a look at the exercise, you've got 12 sentences, 12 newspaper headlines. What I'd like you to do first on your own, okay, just try to replace the words in italics with the words in the box, words and phrases in the box. Anything you're really not sure of, shout or stick it in the chat box, Okay, give you three or four minutes on your own to try it. So, what does vows mean? Vow. O W S. Yeah, so if you vow to do something, yeah, v -v -v, vow to do something, you promise to do it. It's like when people get married, you exchange vows, you exchange your promises. Thank yeah? you. You're welcome. Crackdown, Oksana. Yeah, so if there's a crackdown, um, it's when the police and the government try harder to stop something, okay? So it can be a verb, you can crack down on, you know, I don't know, street drinkers, or they can launch a crackdown on drink driving, or launch a crackdown on, you know, illegal photocopying outcomes. Need a tiny bit more time. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Go on, I'll give you one minute or two. And what does toll mean? T O W L? The toll is the number of people who've died in an accident or a natural disaster of some kind or a plane crash. And we shouldn't change these words, yes? You need to change the words in italics. 
for uh, the no no i mean we should for example holes so, i have to write it as it is holes. yeah you don't need to change the form or anything okay let's go through what we've got so far okay and see so in the first one the bomb blast the explosion yeah bomb blast number of dead reaches 20. instead of saying number of dead bomb blast oh. 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 yeah reaches oh, 20. And often when you've got the news programs, you know, if there's been a kind of terrible disaster, like in London, when we had the fire in this big tower block, the Grenfell Tower, for like three or four days after this, every time you turned on the news, it would say, the toll from the Grenfell fire has now reached 20. The death toll is believed to be around 80. The police have confirmed the final toll as, you know, 85. Okay, and President... Is something like death rate? Again? Not death oh, rate. Oh, death rate is different, yeah? <laughs> yeah, death rate is more like the birth rate. Uh-huh. You know, it's like the number of people being born or the number of people dying annually or something. Mm -hmm. So the toll is always after an accident or a war or something like that, yeah? Thank you. But also sometimes you use like this, right there. It really takes toll. <coughs> Um, like, you know, if you're teaching a lot and you're teaching 30, 40 hours a week and you're teaching most weeks a year, the work really takes its toll on you. It has a kind of hard impact on you. It tires you out. It exhausts you. You feel burned out. So you've also got this expression, you know, it takes its toll on you. Like people who smoke and drink for years and years and years, you know, all the smoking and the drinking takes its toll on people. Is the verb toll like the bell tolls connected? With Same word. You know, yeah. I guess maybe the bell tolls because it's for when people die. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Also, there is a toll road. Yeah. Toll yeah, road. where you have to pay a toll. Tax. Yes. Yeah, like a tax. So again, it's that idea of it takes something from you. Yeah. Okay, so President praises breakthrough in the peace process. Hail. Hails. Hails. Yeah, okay. So they hail the breakthrough. Uh, anything else you might hail? So, you know, President hails the breakthrough in the peace process. President hails. Anything else? Reforms. Hails the new reforms. Yep. Anything else? A new policy? Okay, so yeah, yeah, it's usually when there's a kind of new law, new policy, peace process, breakthrough, they hail this stage, they praise it, yeah? Um, mm -hmm. What unit are we using? Unit 13, page 116, Eleonora, sorry. <laughs> Someone's just joined late. Okay, and number three? Club bans bans in crackdown on hooliganism. Bars. Bars. Bar. Yeah. And again, they often use it like um, if there's a nightclub or a pub or something and someone has been told they're not allowed to go back there because of something bad that they've done. If they try to go back, the security guys might tell them, listen, you're barred. Okay, you're not allowed in. Okay, and Sanders found not guilty of bribery charges. Cleared? Cleared. Yeah. Cleared of. Is it his sur is it a surname? Or yes, it's a surname. Okay. And anything else you might be cleared of? Mm. Again? Of suspicion? No, you can't be cleared of suspicion. Accusation. Cleared of duties? No. Nah. Like it has to be a crime. So it's something like you've been cleared of the rape charges, cleared of yeah. murder charges, cleared of fraud charges. Yeah? So it's usually you're arrested, you're charged with these things, you go to court, they find you're not guilty, you've been cleared of all charges. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So it may be like that. Okay, and police take $10 million drugs in house raid? Seize. Seize. Okay, sounds a bit more dramatic. 
And uh, anything else that the police might seize during a raid? Weapon, guns, guns. Yeah, okay. You know, so they often kind of, wait well, there, they seize a huge stash of guns. Drugs. Oh, money. Oh, it's it's money. 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 Oh, it can also be money as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, usually it, it's drugs, guns, or money. Yeah, sometimes all three, I guess. Okay, and Wynn brings Boca, uh, it's a football team from Argentina, to the point at which they can win the league title. So bring bring, bring, yeah, bring, bring, bring Boca off. to brink of league title. Yeah, and anything else you might be on the brink of, apart from on the brink of winning the league? On the brink of disaster. Yeah, can be, can be for negative things as well. You know, it's how I'm feeling a little bit ahead of the general election tomorrow. Yeah, so it can be for negative things, can be like on the brink of disaster. Yeah, uh, on the brink of a nervous breakdown. You know, it's how most teachers feel as you get towards Christmas. God, I'm on the brink of a nervous breakdown. But it can be positive things as well. So, you know, on the brink of victory. Yeah, on the brink of a major new breakthrough. Okay, and a secret document that was given to the press reveals plans to slash jobs. Leak. 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 Yeah. Yeah, why not leakage? Or it's, uh, <coughs> it's not a noun. In short term? It's the wrong word. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> why? Uh, because, uh, because it's a leak. Because it's the wrong word. Yeah, and it can be a verb as well. So, you know, you, you can leak documents to the press. And the people who leak documents are called... Whistleblowers. Yeah, whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, often they try to find the whistleblower who leaked the document to the press. Okay. And that... Uh, tell me. <coughs> okay, if you slash jobs, what happens? You cut. Yeah, cut them how? A little bit, a lot. A lot? Yeah, so if you slash, <laughs> you cut them dramatically. Anything else you might slash? Mm. Slash jobs. Salaries. Yeah, okay. Yeah, funding. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Kirov increases stake in Mac Industries in takeover bid? Ups. Ups. Yeah, as a verb. So you can up your stake. You can up the amount that you own in a company when you're trying to launch a hostile takeover. Is it formal or informal? It depends what you think formal and informal mean. For example, for essays, is it a good idea to use to up? Yeah, it, well, it depends on the essay. Um, <laughs> if you're writing an essay about people increasing their share in things, yes, it's fine. No, or I'm talking about an about, academic one. Academic for exams, for example. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about upping your offer or upping your price or, yeah, upping your share in a company, it's fine. You see it a lot in kind of business journalism. Yeah, and the plurals with double P. So they're upping their offer. <coughs> and police battle with protesters at union rally. Clash. <laughs> Clash. Okay. You know, sounds quite violent usually. And teachers exclude the possibility of strike action. Ruled out. Rule, rule out. out. Okay. Rule out. And they're saying that's not going to happen. They rule it out. We've had a, a big story going on here where the current government, the Conservatives, uh, are sort of ruling out selling the National Health Service to the Americans. But, um, you know, lots of people don't believe them when they say they're ruling it out. And Kohl decides not to take part in open over sex scandal. Pulls out of? Pulls out of. Yeah, so you can pull out of a competition Anything else you can pull out of? Project. Pull out of a project, pull out of a deal. Yeah. Pull out of the country, if we're yeah. talking about groups. 
Yeah, you can. And uh, any other reasons why you might pull out of a competition, apart from the fact you've been caught up in a sex scandal? You've been tested positive. Uh, indeed, yeah. So, I mean, uh, usually if you test positive, you're barred or you're banned. Mm. If you pull out... Serious you, health decision. problems. Again? Serious health problems. Yeah, I mean, usually it's like you've got a kind of a, an ongoing back problem or a knee problem or whatever. And so you decide to pull out. Okay. And Hector <laughs> promises to continue despite outbursts. Vows. Vows. Yeah, he promises to. And what do you think it means here, despite outburst? What kind of outburst? Emotional, very, very, uh, very strong emotions. Yeah, and especially like if you do it in public, you know, maybe someone asks you, how do you feel about the latest comments? And you completely get angry and you start <laughs> screaming and shouting like this. And then this clip goes viral. And you know, you have to apologize for your outburst. But maybe sometimes, you know, you've done it at work. If, if you lose your temper with your colleagues or you lose it with your boss or something, maybe later you have to apologize for your outburst. Uh, that means burst into tears. This is a common expression. No, no, Doesn't no. Mean no. That? Burst into burst tears into like you start crying. An outburst is usually like a kind of, you explode in anger. Oh. Yeah? Oh, okay. And then later you have to go, look, I'm really sorry. I've been under a lot of pressure. I'm not sleeping well. I didn't mean what I said. I'm sorry for my outburst. Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything from here you wanted again? Anything you're not sure of? Okay, so I think what we'll move on to is exercise three. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute just to read through the questions one to eight in exercise three. We'll skip number two for now. Okay, give you a minute just to read through anything you're not sure of, shout. In a minute, I'm going to put you in rooms and you're going to talk about these. Anything you're not sure of here? Can you please explain please again break crackdowns? Break. Which one? Crackdowns. Yeah, so if there's a crackdown in, uh, on something, yeah? It's when the police and the government try harder to stop something from happening. So, you know, for example, I know in Russia, um, there's a crackdown on smoking in public places. Yeah, you know, like 20 years ago, you used to see it everywhere. Now it's like very difficult to find a place where you can have a cigarette in Moscow. Yeah, uh, in London, for example, I mean, 10 years ago, there was a lot of illegal cigarette selling. People would smuggle cigarettes in and like organized gangs would sell them on the streets. Then they launched a crackdown on this and suddenly you didn't see it anymore. Yeah. So they try harder to stop something illegal from happening. Thank you. Yeah. And a bid to break a record? Is a bid is like an attempt. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, you know, someone's trying to break a record or mm -hmm. trying to win something. Yeah. So I'm going to put you back into breakout rooms, okay? Rooms of three again. Um, I'll be popping backwards and forwards between the different rooms and listening in. I'll give you a few minutes. These questions, your answers, your experiences, your ideas, okay? So I'll leave Anita to do the magic. Done. Done, perfect. Okay, I'll see you in a few minutes. Um, we'll just look a little bit at some of the language, um, but first I just wanted to clarify number one, the example of a real blast. Um, did anyone come up with any examples? Chernobyl, ah, Chernobyl was not a blast. No? Chernobyl was a nuclear reactor that went into meltdown. Yeah. How about I have an example. Tell me. Is that Natalia? Uh, yeah. 
Pentagon. Uh, is it about the blast? Which one? In, in the USA, you know, Twin Towers. Uh, no, in, that was a terrorist attack where they flew an airplane into the buildings. So it wasn't a blast, yes, no. and finally. No. Yeah, I've got an example. One of the participants of the conference where you took part as well, ELT Trends, yeah. wrote on, on, on Facebook, the conference was a real blast. Ah, that's a different meaning. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine, <laughs> but it's a blast. <laughs> <laughs> so if you say something was a real blast, yeah, so I, I have an example. Training. Go on, tell me. Uh, well, uh, I was telling it in our um, discussion. I was saying it in our discussion that a friend of mine used to live in Chelyabinsk, and several years ago, a uh, meteorite fell near Chelyabinsk, and the blast uh, broke my friend's windows. Uh, is that the uh, right usage of it blast? It is, but that's not, that's a different kind of blast again. You can say that the blast or the noise or the impact broke the windows. Yeah, I remember the Chelyabinsk thing. In this context, it basically means the exploding of a bomb. Of a bomb? Okay, it's a bomb. Hiroshima, Hiroshima, yeah. Oh, for example. I mean, I remember in 1993 when the IRA bombed Canary Wharf in London. I can remember waking up in the middle of the night and hearing the bomb blast. You know, it was about oh. eight miles from where I was living, but I heard it, woke me up. Um, and so, you know, it was a physical bomb explosion. Does a blast always presuppose massive effect of this explosion? Usually, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, like I'm um, in London in 2005 when you had the terror attacks on the underground and on the bus. There were four different bomb blasts in four different areas. Yeah, so it's always a bomb, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just looking through and thinking about some of the language that have been repeated. <laughs> yeah, so some of you were talking about um, on the brink of disaster and uh, talking about the recent decision to ban or bar Russian athletes from international sport again for the next four years. Mm -hmm. um, following all of these repeated accusations of illegal giving of performance enhancing drugs to people. Illegal? Drug dealing? No. Do doping. Doping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, the accusations of illegal doping. Mm -hmm. And they, they haven't been cleared of these accusations. Oh. Right. It, it sounds like the international bodies have decided to believe the accusations. And, uh, I'm just a teacher. <laughs> I'm not the judge. Uh, no, I mean, I just, I, I'm just practicing this vocabulary. <laughs> so some of you were talking about the whistleblowers and sort of different reasons why whistleblowers do things and saying, well, Sometimes whistleblowers can see there's all this kind of dark, bad, put, strange put light. stuff going on. Not put a light. So they want to mm, a light on. To shed. Uh, you can tell you've got two choices. Shed light on or mm, a light on. Mm. So you can do it either way. Shed light on or shine a light on. Mm. Yeah, one of them you need to <clears throat> And uh, if you want to talk about all of the kind of, you know, the the dodgy, illegal, espionage and spy... Messy. Hacking, nah, not messy. Messy bedroom. Murky. Again? Murky. Murky. No. Yeah, murky. Yeah. Murky. You know, if you work in espionage or you work as a spy, it's a very murky world. You know, mm. it's like if you go diving and you go down like 30, 40 meters, yeah, it gets quite murky down there. You can't mm. see very clearly, it's not safe, you don't know what's going to come out at you. And so, you know, if you're this kind of whistleblower, well, the reason why you're, you're kind of leaking information, you have a fairly pure, mm -mm, a fairly Motives. pure... Motives. Motive. Motives. Yeah. Okay. Some of you were saying, yeah, but sometimes 
people leak information because they're scared, because they're worried about what might happen to their families. Protection. They feel like it's the only way that they can kind of look after themselves. Self-protection. No, I knew mm. you'd say that. So be easy. Yeah. Preservation. Preservation. Yeah. So you know, it's just for self-preservation. It's done out of fear. Some of you were talking about companies that you'd worked for, and you were saying that when you signed a contract with those companies, they were worried that you might steal or leak information. So in order to prevent this kind of leaking of sensitive information to their competitors, to prevent industrial espionage, you have to sign a... Non-disclosure non agreement. Non-disclosure non yes. agreement. Sometimes people just call it an NDA. <clears throat> yeah. Which I can't spell, non-disclosure. Ah. Oh been a long day agreement okay someone can't remember who was talking about a judge and the police raided the judge's apartment and they found this huge amount of money in his house okay and you know he had to try and explain where all the money had come from and you were saying like it was a real lot of money it was a mm of a lot of money a bulk now if you want to emphasize how much it was Ton. Pile. That, Ton. that was a hell of a lot of money. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a hell of a lot of. Okay. A fortune. Uh, you could say it like that, yeah. But if you want to emphasize, like, you know, they found some money. How much money? A hell of a lot of money. More conversational, yeah? It's no, just more no. like normal, everyday spoken English. Uh -huh. And usually with fortune, like you spend a fortune, it cost a fortune, but they found a hell of a lot of money. Mm. He had a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some of you are asking if you can say that an event causes a blast in the media. And I was saying no. Oppression. No. Out there. Like a kind of everyone oh. talking about it and writing about it. And there's an angry response. Obsession. The media. Yeah. No. Uh, outburst? Outburst is when you shout angrily at someone. Uh -huh. An outcry. Uh, an outcry. Yeah. So, you know, maybe like now with the, um, the news about the banning of Russian athletes, you know, there'll be an outcry in the Russian media. And can I always say it caused uproar? It caused uproar as well, yeah. With no article. It caused uproar, it caused an outcry. And the last one, some of you were talking about people who were almost successful, but then everything went wrong for them. And you were saying, oh, you know, I can think of lots of cases of people who were on the oh, yeah. brink Fair of shaped. success. Yeah, but then everything went? Pear-shaped. Pear-shaped, Pear -shaped, yeah. Everything went wrong. Everything went pear-shaped. So, one minute. I'm going to stop that share. I am going to send you that file. Once. May I ask a question? Of course you may. Uh, so can we use on the edge of as, as the same as uh, on the brink of? On the what? On the edge of something. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Usually it's, on the edge is more literal. So it's like, you know, I was on the edge of my seat the whole way through. Uh, it means excited, yeah? Yeah, like if, if you're watching a film or something and it's really gripping, you're on the edge of your seat. And on yeah. the ver verge. You know, don't leave that glass on the edge of the table. Mm -hmm. On the verge is usually more metaphorical. So it's usually more kind of, you know, on the verge of success, on the verge of disaster, on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more of a kind of metaphorical concept. So I've just sent you the vocab there. May I ask you a question? <laughs> of course you may. Yeah, when pear shaped, why pear? Pear, something that pear shaped. Pear. Like this, and then yeah. it kind of collapses. Okay. Because oh, the dramatic. rest is in the shape of a circle, right? Yeah, exactly. In the shape of an no, apple. It starts so well, and it starts in a kind of good way, and then it just goes, bleh. Okay. I guess. 
you know, and I've, I've no idea to be honest, but it makes sense to me as a metaphor. Starts well, collapses at the bottom. Anything else you wanted to ask about? Any other vocab or anything you've looked at that you're not sure of? So, and, uh, Hugh, could you please clarify something about pull out of? Uh, yeah. So we worked with ladies, so with this verb, it can it be used in the passive form? Uh, somehow I was pulled out of anything. Is it, and is it about negativity if I use it in a passive form? I've never heard it in the passive form. Really? Because no. it sounds like to be used in the passive form for me, you know? <laughs> uh, maybe I, is it the influence of first language that makes you want to do it? Look, and Maria in the chat texted, the troops were pulled out of Iraq. Yeah, I mean, in that, yeah, yeah, okay, so you can use it like that, yeah? It's only like, in this case normally, in military. More normally, you'd use it like this. So you'd say In the active form. Yeah. Uh, so I pull out of an event. Yeah, uh, well, am I a bad lady or what? Uh -huh. the troops out. And how about the active, this meaning, what we have in our course book? So, so um, here, he uh -huh, pulled so in out our the tournament. So he was supposed to play in the American Open or whatever, yeah? But then mm -hmm. at the last minute, he suddenly said, I'm not going to play this year because of this story, because of the sex scandal. Ah, so let people down to some extent. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can let people down. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it like that. It's basically just you're supposed to be somewhere doing something like playing in a competition or participating in peace talks and you decide for whatever reason, usually something bad that's happened, that you're not going to take part in it. It's like maybe um, <laughs> if I'm supposed to talk at a conference and I have a family problem, okay, I might pull out of the conference because of a death in the family. Mm -hmm. No, it's clear. Thanks a lot. Uh, could we say that uh, the UK is pulling out of uh, the EU? <laughs> Bloody slowly. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, yeah, they're leaving. <laughs> it's not a possible collocation. Yeah, Brexiting. <laughs> Brexiting, yes. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Pretending to leave, but not really. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, I've been saying it for three years. It's not going to happen. Mm. No, some yeah, of the okay. teachers, like, I, don't, I know that there are problems getting visas, for example, now for English residents who are not in the UK currently. Oh. So, some of it is happening. It's all right. We're going to have a new government on Friday, so we'll see. It'll all change. Um, you know, keep, keep the faith. I'm, I'm quite optimistic about fact it's going to change, so... But yeah, you know, it can be, you pull out of the conference, you pull out of the competition at the last minute. Yeah. So it's usually pull out of the conference, pull out of the tournament, right there. Is it possible to say pull out of uh, a trip? No, you cancel. Uh -huh. Yeah, at the last minute. It's quite a limited set of collocations. It's basically pull, pull the troops out, um, you pull out of a conference, pull out of a tournament, <coughs> pull out of talks, pull exams, out of a deal. Exam? No. You, you don't sit your exams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't really pull out of the exams. I mean, again, if somebody said it and it was in a conversation, I probably wouldn't notice and think, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But it's not the normal collocation for that. With all of these things, I hate saying it's not possible because, <laughs> you know, it's Anything just not, it's, not prob it's not probable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You. Any other language questions before uh, what, we move on? What about the, uh, this um, the phrasal verb uh, "sound out"? Because we had quite a yes, yes, yes Hannah. We, <laughs> are, we debated on that how to use it efficiently in the text. So you might say something like. Like this, whether. So, for example, maybe you're you you know you're close to the boss, and the boss wants to introduce some new policy in your office, and the boss says to you, "Do you think the staff will like this idea? Is it going to cause problems?" And you say, "Okay, look, what I'll do, 
I'll talk to the other members of staff and I'll try to find out how they're feeling. I'll sound them out. Mm -hmm. So it's usually when you talk to a group of people in order to find out how they feel about something before making a decision. Yeah. So, you know, you can sound out the other members of staff and see how they're feeling. Um, so did the government uh, sound out uh, your opinions, I mean, as citizens of the UK, before, before uh, taking action? <laughs> yeah, don't use it like that. No? It's usually, no. That they can ask you for your opinion. Yeah? It's usually like, I'll sound your mum out. I'll sound it. I see why you have problems with it, because it's a tricky one to explain. The, the only time I can think of that I would use it is if I'm talking about trying to find out. So, you know, if I'm talking to Anita about organising this webinar and I say, how do you want to do it? What's the plan? Maybe she would say, listen, I'll sound everyone out and see what people feel. OK, yeah. so it's usually you sound a group of people out yourself to find out what they feel before you make a decision. So not on a state level? It's not, it's on a personal level. Mm. Well, I might say, you know, can you sound everyone out and see what they liked best at least about the event? Yeah, so it might be something like that. You know, it's either I'll sound them out or can you sound them out? And I want to try and find out their feelings about things so that we can plan better or, or organize better in the future. No, yeah. now it's clear. Thanks. Yeah. yeah? You're mm -hmm. welcome. <coughs> so, anything else you're not sure of? 